Hi, everyone. Welcome to this quick introduction to the AAAF community. I'm Meg O'Hearn. I'm the Community and Events Coordinator for the AAAF Consortium, and I work alongside Josh Hadro and Glenn Robson to support the various activities of the community, uh, including events like the one that you're attending today. Uh, so thanks for joining me on this quick introduction, and let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted to start off by sharing a photograph of one of the last times that we were able to hold a conference in person. This picture is from Göttingen, Germany in the summer of 2019. And while it's sad that we can't get together in the same room today, it's exciting to be able to talk about AAAF with a huge group of people um, like we have attending virtually this week. So AAAF is implemented globally by over 120 institutions. Um, these are, of course, just the ones that we know about as an open source framework and set of APIs. Um, anyone can adopt AAAF. And here's a map showing implementations globally. So the blue dots are AAAF consortium members who financially support the community. And the red dots are other institutions who have implemented AAAF. The AAAF community has grown considerably over the last few years, and the number of attendees joining us at this conference this week, uh, nearly 1,800, is really a testament to its growth. And so much about AAAF comes down to the community that's involved in it. Um, in fact, so much so that we define AAAF as both a globally adopted open source standard for delivering image and audio visual resources on the web, and also as a global community, uh, open global community of software developers, librarians, researchers, educators, uh, museums, universities, creative agencies, etc. Um, all these people who come together to develop the APIs, implement them in software, and expose their collections in AAAF. So it's really a grassroots effort between many different institutions and people to work together to solve um, their problems and benefit from um, collaboration um, and others' experiences. So today's session is really intended to be an overview of how this community works and how you can get involved in ways that make sense for you. Um, and that's a journey that you've actually started uh, by joining us for this conference today. So thank you. Uh, so having said that, here's just a quick look at what we'll be covering in this session. First, we'll dive into community and all the different community groups that keep AAAF moving along. And then we'll look at the difference between the community and the consortium, also known as AAAFC. And then we'll also look at some of the ways that you can get involved. So there are several types of groups in the AAAF community. Uh, first are the community groups, then the technical specification groups, the editors, and the coordinating committee. And I'll go into what each of these groups does a little bit more deeply. Um, but first, while we're looking at the community at a high level, here's a diagram that kind of attempts to show you the, the many different ways that groups of people work together in the AAAF community. Um, it's, it's complicated. There's a lot of intersecting things, a lot of different topics and people um, and projects. But I think Overall, it's important to note that there's this uh, kind of crazy overlap across the groups. Um, they're collaborative, they involve people with different areas of expertise in many different capacities. Um, so going back to the types of group in the AAAF community, um, starting with community groups, these are basically uh, interest or affinity groups. Um, and they're led by uh, co-chairs for each different topic who organize their meetings and invite speakers or develop topics for conversations um, that happen during regular calls. Um, so they, you can say they focus on a variety of topics. Um, so 3D, um, 3D is actually not yet an official part of the AAAF APIs, um, but they are people who have formed a group to kind of work together on building consensus before the technical work on the specifications begins to support uh, 3D objects. Um, some other groups, uh, Discovery for Humans, uh, they're presenting um, quite a bit at the conference today. They do some work on um, UX type topics in AAAF. Uh, Manuscripts is one of the longest standing AAAF groups. Outreach works on kind of finding ways to reach out to new and more diverse communities to spread the word about AAAF, um, et cetera. So you can visit this URL on the screen 
to learn more about uh, all the groups and see what interests you. Um, and just keep in mind, of course, that anyone can join a group call. Uh, next is the technical specifications group. And you'll probably hear these referred to as TSGs. We're big on acronyms here. So these groups uh, work together on laying groundwork for upcoming changes to the AAAF specifications. So they have the specific charge of writing documentation for different applications of AAAF, and they work from user stories or use cases that community members submit through GitHub. Um, and anyone comfortable using GitHub issues can, of course, add to this list. The link is down there. So for an example of how a TSG uh, might work, um, the AV or audiovisual TSG recently worked out what needed to happen for AV materials to be supported in the AAAF specifications. Um, and you know, they defined that, and when the work was complete with the release of version three of the AAAF uh, image and presentation APIs, they then transitioned to a community group for interested people uh, to come together and share their knowledge uh, as they work to implement version three of the APIs for their AV materials. And both types of groups, um, the community groups and the TSGs are really just based on this idea of mutual respect and inclusion as per our code of conduct. There's a link to it at the bottom of the slide. Uh, they work openly, um, anyone's invited to the meetings and public notes are available um, on the AAAF Google Drive, which is open. Um, their regular meetings are available openly on the communi community calendar. Um, those are linked um, in the session description in Whova, um, along with some of the other URLs that I've shown you. Um, and they meet regularly online, as I mentioned, but also just face-to-face -face at different AAAF meetings and events, such as the conference or the fall working meeting um, and other stuff. So there's a couple other groups you should also know about to get a fuller sense of how the community works. Uh, the editors take feedback from the community in the form of those use cases um, and um, a few other forms and make sure that it's consistent and that the implications of changes are really well thought through um, and really make sense and you know, are done um, in the best way. And then they take that uh, knowledge that they've worked through and edit the specification language for the AAAF APIs. Um, and the coordinating committee is an advisory board that kind of helps us make sure we're acting in ways that are the most useful for the broadest number of people um, in terms of our day-to-day -day operations um, and various choices that we make, um, strategies that we take, et cetera. So the AAAF community and all of its different groups work on basically on ways of implementing AAAF um, and concerns surrounding that um, and the many different ways that that can be done. And this differs from the work of the consortium. So the consortium, is the group that financially supports the work of the community and just makes it possible. Uh, it funds the three AAAFC staff members who assist the community and help pull things together uh, with this kind of bird's eye view of everything that's going on. The consortium also provides governance and oversight. Uh, consortium members can join the executive committee or the operating committee and help lead strategic direction for the community. And they also get seats on the technical review committee, also called the TRC, again, love acronyms. And they regularly uh, review and vote on work of the editors um, and the cookbook group who create um, code recipes for um, creating different things in IIIF uh, to ensure that the changes that are being made make sense for the community more broadly. Um, so, you know, they say, yes, um, these changes that you've proposed really make sense for us as a group and we approve them. And so all these different groups um, get together in a number of different settings, um, some of which I've mentioned already, um, both in person and online. So we have two major conferences, the annual conference, which takes place in the spring or summer. Uh, and that usually trades off between the United States and Europe, although we're definitely looking to expand to different locations. There's the fall working meeting, which is more of a hands-on event where community members can get together and propose and work through new ideas or address outstanding needs. Um, and community members also hold their own events, uh, which include things like workshops or showcases or other things like that. Um, 
There have been some on some more narrowly focused ideas, such as using AAAF in research. Uh, and just a tip, actually, if you take a look at the AAAF hashtag on Twitter, this is a really great way to find out about these kinds of things that are happening near you. Um, and additionally, the AAAF staff, or specifically Glenn Robson, who's our technical coordinator, um, holds a five-day uh, online workshop where you can learn the basics of AAAF. Uh, it happens roughly monthly, and uh, it's accessible to anyone who is comfortable using the web. And it's just really a great uh, experience for those who would like just some clarity on what AAAF can do and how it works and to experience that in a really hands-on way um, with some, some support from someone who can walk you through uh, working with different aspects of the framework. Uh, there's also uh, general community calls on a roughly bi-weekly basis. These are not associated with any sort of community groups. They're kind of led by the AAAF staff and we invite uh, different folks to talk and either give demos of new projects or um, come together to discuss uh, different AAAF adjacent topics uh, just together as a group. Uh, and then finally, there are just the regular meetings that are held by the community groups and the technical specification groups. And the cadence of those meetings kind of varies depending on um, what the chairs have deemed to be appropriate. Um, so now let's take a look at the different ways you can get involved. So there are some easy ways, um, easy things that you can do to kind of stay in touch. Uh, the first being super easy, you can just sign up for the newsletter. And this is how you'll learn about new AAAF implementations, new AAAF tools, upcoming events, webinars, trainings, et cetera. Um, you can join our email list uh, called AAAF Discuss. This is a great place for asking technical questions um, and getting feedback from others in the community. Um, Slack as well serves a similar purpose. The Slack channels are divided up by a number of different interest groups. Um, and you can also join a training. Um, so we have an upcoming one in July, um, which that bit.ly link leads to. That link is also on Whova um, where you can access it. Um, and that's the five-day training uh, led by Glenn that I mentioned. Um, and actually regarding the training, if you're interested in learning a bit more about what it's like to take the course, an attendee wrote a really lovely Medium post about her experience taking it last summer. And she actually ended up uh, joining us as a member of the program committee for the event that you're at today. Um, so you can kind of see the progression of starting out um, getting more involved there. Um, and this link is also available on Hoopa. Um, and then there's some additional ways you can get involved. Um, and these, the, you know, how far you go really depends on the level of involvement that you're interested in. So as just an individual person, you can do things like just broadly share your knowledge about AAAF with others at your institution or in your region or in your sector. You can join a AAAF community group call. Um, and I just wanna say that it's totally fine if you just wanna join and observe or listen, there's no pressure to jump in uh, unless you're comfortable. Um, and just know that the AAAF community is available to help you by sharing experiences and answering questions and that sort of thing. And again, the calendar of these calls is available um, on Whova, the link to it. Uh, if you're familiar with AAAF and feel comfortable speaking about it, you could consider running a local event. So actually at this conference, uh, we actually have a number of groups who have organized regional meetings to share information about AAAF with their local peers, uh, some in their own um, languages. So we have a, a French meeting um, and stuff like that to allow people to come together um, according to their location, even though we can't necessarily all be together in person, uh, at least we can kind of gather together online. Um, and finally, you could also consider uh, submitting the use cases that I uh, mentioned earlier, if that's an area that you feel comfortable with. Additional next steps. Um, so the next step would be kind of getting involved at an institutional level. Um, so there's even more ways to get involved at this level. Um, the first being joining the AAAF consortium uh, as either a full or an associate member uh, to help support the work of the community. And there's actually more uh, details at that link, of course, also included on Whova with the other links that I've shared. Another main way is to expose your institution's collections via AAAF and use AAAF compatible software. Or if the software that you currently use isn't compatible, you could also get involved by uh, sending that particular company a note uh, requesting that they do become AAAF compatible. Um, and actually building on that, 
here's a snapshot of the ecosystem of software and other technologies that have already implemented AAAF that you might have access to. And I should just note that this is not in any way an exhaustive list uh, of software. Um, it's just a few examples. So that's about it for the introduction to the community. We hope you'll stay in touch via the newsletter and other outlets. And feel free to reach out at any time with any questions that you have. Uh, so thanks again and have a great conference.